Confused what's happening? Today's video is not a recipe video. It's all about the different varieties of knives, some basics, and the different techniques and uses of knives. Welcome to my world of knives. Let's first understand what is a knife. A knife is basically a sharp tool. A sharp tool which is used for cutting generally in the kitchen or it is also used as a weapon. In our case of course it is used as a sharp cutting tool. It has a blade which is supposed to be sharp and it has got a handle which is of course supposed to be rounded and comfortable. Now what you need to have as a basic in the kitchen is of course a knife a peeler and along with this a sharpening steel rod now these are absolute basics let's try to understand the purpose of all three the knife of course like i said is a sharp tool which is used as a cutting tool or an implement the blade the sharpening blade or the sharpening tool or the sharp metal rod is used to file it now there are two ways you can file it you can file it away from you or you can file it towards you the sharpener or the sharpening rod or the metal rod has a bolster here which is like a little wing. Now the wing is so that you do not injure yourself while sharpening. So this, this. So never hold it like this because this way you will straight run into your finger. Now initially you need to go extremely slow because you are not comfortable. You do not do this for a living day in and day out. So you go slow. But once you kind of get the hang of it, you just go fast. So fast that you do not even realize whether you are going away from you or coming towards you. But like I said, with caution. So before we move ahead, let's start understanding the different parts of a knife. Now, of course, for a common man, this is a handle and this entire thing is the blade. But otherwise, professionally, this of course is the handle. This of course is the blade. But let's first break the handle into several components. The handle has a butt. These three screws that you see are the rivets or the fasteners. Now of course these are three on this side, three on the other side. So these when they get pinched or when they get clamped, they hold the tang which is where the blade runs into the handle. Where you actually hold the knife like so. This of course is the bolster. This entire blade also has several components. There's a top edge and there's a bottom edge. The top edge is the blunt edge and the bottom edge generally is the sharp edge. You never run your finger or your hand on this side. The spine of the knife is right here. This is known as the edge of the knife right here. This is known as the heel of the knife when I'm actually pinching the knife. Now generally we call this the tip of the knife but professionally this is the tip of the knife and this is the point of the knife. Now the bolster of course in this case is not very clear but here it's extremely prominent you can actually hold it like so. Now this is a very different kind of a knife which is held very differently but just for you to understand how a bolster looks categorically different this is where the bolster is. What I have done here is I have created certain few clubs for of course explaining it with ease and also for your understanding. These knives that you see here these are domestic knives which professionally are known as pocket knives or paring knives. This club that you see here, this is a club of all-purpose knives. AP knives as they are professionally called, which of course are used for all purposes. This club that you see here is a club of serrated knives. And this club that you see here is a whole club of choppers. Now choppers are generally used for anything that is large or anything that is to do with Asian or Southeast Asian cuisine. Now, I want to show you two knives from here which are actually broken. This knife, if you see closely, the entire blade is broken, which is not good. Kitchen use wise, the first thing that you should do is of course, go to somebody who can sharpen it professionally for you and get this entire blade cut at least half a centimeter, right? And then when you sharpen this, this blade or this knife is usable. The primary principle of using a knife is that a knife at any point in time should be sharp and not blunt because that way, if you cut it towards you or cut it away from you, it is that one gash 
that's going to make all the difference right if you have to keep running it like a saw the whole purpose is lost the second knife that i want to show you is a knife which is actually a chopper the handle of which is broken so basically what has happened here the tang that was running into the blade has loosened up also if you see this does not have rivets so basically which means it is just inserted and that's about it so ideally always go for a knife which has rivets so in that case the blade and the tang is tightly held into the handle right now moving on to the first club of knives which is the all purpose knife now the all purpose knife the name says it all it's all purpose so if you have these knives in your kitchen whether a domestic kitchen or a professional kitchen ideally you may may not need other knives now professionally of course every knife has a purpose so you may need it but if you're taking it on a domestic front if you have this it is perfect professionally this domestically these knives are just perfect now when i say these knives i mean one of these many because all these are of different brands they are of different sizes they are of different shapes but eventually the purpose of all this is just the same professionally what we also do is we have a little pocket here in the kitchen so this knife after you do whatever job it gets cleaned and it goes straight into the pocket becomes easier for us to pull it out and just do whatever job right towards the end right so this is done let's begin with the all purpose knife let me pick the first knife which in this case is an all purpose knife and show you how to cut a chicken now mind you this is not a chicken tutorial video i've done that already this is just for you to understand how to take the knife and run it differently of course another important step for you to understand and note here is if you are brand conscious it's of course a different chapter altogether to speak about but otherwise take a knife which is of your comfort so for example the handle should have like a firm grip the blade could be a thin blade or a thick blade it could also be a lighter knife or a heavier knife depending on your comfort don't bring a heavier knife and then say oh my hands were paining don't do that do not also get an extremely lighter knife and then say ah it was too light i just could not do anything with it so whenever you choose a knife always take it out of the packet try to hold it by the bolster by the handle try to do some dummy cutting and that's about it and that's how you choose a knife let's move on to the chicken to begin with so this of course is an entire bird this is an all purpose knife primarily it has to be sharp but still filing is important so the way you file i've already shown you one two and then you just increase the speed like i said this is not a chicken tutorial but however this is where the first cut goes so if you see like a nice clean smooth cut and that is what is required of this knife so one cut and there you go in one clean cut and that's about it i'm just for now cutting this into two pieces and that's about it now this is to do with an all purpose knife i'll keep this aside on a domestic level you could also use this one as an all purpose knife now if you see the purpose is the same it's just that this one is lighter and it's easier to handle so literally holding it with the index finger and the thumb getting into the grooves like so and this is how you cut it now one of these two knives now of course like i said this is a paring knife and this is an all purpose knife but both could be used for a similar purpose of trimming the fat off what's important is like i said the blade has to be nice and sharp now similarly like i said i showed you one with a paring knife i'm showing it to you similarly using an all purpose knife so the purpose like i said remains the same trimming the fat in one single cut and finally you find the joint and you separate the thigh and the leg now this of course gives you that little bit of a pressure to push through the chicken or to pull it towards you so put that to use now the flow of the cut is basically either away from you or you cut it towards you now this depends on your personal comfort now this brings me to another very important knife like i said this is an all purpose knife 
I can cut this carcass into several pieces using an all-purpose knife. But just to show you, I have a knife which is possibly one of the largest knives in my possession. This is a chopper. This is of course used for uh, bigger meats and things like that. Um, how to use this? Very simple. Let me keep this aside. If you're not a regular when it comes to using a chopper, you stand away. You hold the chicken or the carcass in place and you give it one knock. That's about it. You may not have this knife with you, but what you may have is a chopper. Now, because this is a broken chopper, I'm not using this. I have a chopper, which is like a single blade, single piece chopper, which does not have like a separate rivet and things like that. It's all made out of a single piece. Now you take this and use it similarly. But if you see the difference, after knocking it, I still have to give it a cut. And this is heavy duty. So the job that this would do and that would do, you will have to apply the pressure accordingly. Now if you see, similarly, one knock and out. Now this segment was dedicated of course to the all-purpose knife, the domestic all-purpose knife or the paring knife, and of course the choppers of different kinds. Let's move to the next segment or next club of knives, which is a fillet knife. Fillet knife, as the name says it, is generally used to fillet or fillet a fish. Let's do that. And the fillet knife looks something like this. It's basically a handle and it's got a longer blade. Now the purpose of the length of the blade is one that it gets into the grooves of the fish. Of course, deboning and filleting is one of the main purpose of this knife. But what is important in this knife is to note the flexibility of the blade. So it's a thinner blade, see this? And this way, it gets into the different grooves and gashes of the fish. Now the fish that I'm showing you today, of course, like I said, I'm not showing you like a tutorial on pomfret filling, but this is just to make you understand how the knife blade moves into the fish. The first thing, of course, is to get the fins off. Now, in all these cases, what is important to note is that the knife blade needs to be sharp at all points in time. How do you fillet is not important, but what I want to show you is how the knife blade moves into the fish. So, this is where the stomach of the fish is, and this is where the fleshier part of the fish is. So, you start from one end, and you go right till the end like so. And while doing that, if you notice, the thinnest part of the blade has already entered the fish. Now this way, you get a straight one and a half, two inches of deboned fillet right here. If you see, this is where the bone is and this is where the flesh is. Now, if you're doing this for the first time, just ensure that you are as close to the bone as possible because this knife blade may puncture the fish from this side and come out from here and injure you. Now this way if you see, you have the entire boneless piece in your hand and the bone and the carcass is right here. Come to this side, create like a V shape and there you have the first fillet right here. There is skill also that's involved in this. It's not that the knife just does magic. You of course need to also know how to fillet. Go as close as possible to the bone and get the fillet out. Now there's another important purpose of this knife and that is to clean the stomach part which still has a little bit of a residue or a leftover here. So what you do is insert and push it away from you in a zigzag motion. That's where you have a nice and clean fish fillet. Now, of course, you clean this in running water and you have a nice and clean fillet of fish. Now, this is the deboning knife. Remember, I showed this to you right towards the beginning of the video to show you the bolster. Now, when most of the knives are held like this, a deboning knife is held like this literally like a weapon because a deboning knife is used of course 
to debone or to cut a larger carcass so when you have a larger carcass with you you actually carve it like so running around the joints and then pulling it towards you or pushing it away from you so that's the purpose of this knife also if you see the grip of the knife or the handle of the knife it is much rounded so that you can hold the knife any which ways right pushing it right pushing it left pushing it away pushing it towards you it's all possible also if you see the butt of the knife is also rounded so that while you're doing all of this you're literally not hurting anybody right so it's very carefully and very modulately created a knife and the shape of the knife is also very peculiar because if you see it starts very thick and it ends like a point it also has that wavy structure so that you can literally maneuver through the joints of a larger animal and of course i'm not going to cut a carcass for you right here it'll be easier if i show you how to cut a bottle guard using this so you start from the end the furthermost end of a bottle guard and then you literally start carving it like so assuming assuming that there is a joint everywhere that i go round and around that's the purpose and job of a deboning knife so assume that there is like a joint here you went around it another joint here and then you literally carved it around the joints and there you reach so now you can also pull it towards you or you can flip it over and push it away from you easier so this way you can run into any direction now of course because we have these all purpose knives and these paring knives as well this just becomes easier so in case you have fat to remove or you have sinews to remove or you have some cartilage to remove then these little knives just do the purpose so while you may have the biggest of razmatas with you what's important like i said even earlier an all purpose knife or a paring knife a sharpening tool and a peeler simple let's move to the next knife which is a paring knife which could be a combination of this knife and uh, say this knife now both these are paring knives with a very different purpose now this of course is a pocket knife this also works as a pocket knife the purpose of this and this slightly different when you have some shapes to give for example suppose you want to turn this or carve this that's how you do so imagine you want to make these little tunnels so what you do is you start from one side go right till the other side so what happens is this entire curve is where the beak helps you so imagine something like this so that's where you have like how you have turned potatoes quintessentially french cuisine imagine a turned vegetable the trick of using this knife is basically once you start cutting you right away come to the other part of the vegetable without stopping otherwise you'll get jumps and you do not want that to happen so when you start come right towards the end so that you get a nice clean barrel which is very important now generally uh, you can do turned potatoes you can do turned carrots you can do turned squashes and the different vegetables in the root category they all use that turned vegetables in the french cuisine so whenever you think of tornadoes or barrels or turned vegetables this is the knife that is your friend let's move to the next knife which is a palette knife now palette knife really needs no introduction in case you do your um home bakeries and home pastries and things like that then this is the knife where you can literally cover cream onto a cake you want to level anything like so or you want to have a clean edge on a cake or a pastry then this is the knife so i'm not getting into the details of this because you already know this knife and you're very used to using this knife generally the next knife that i want to show you is actually not a knife it's actually a cutter 
Um, we also have a serrated knife, which is right here. The difference between a serrated knife and a serrated cutter, let's see that now. This, of course, is used for vegetables and things like that. This is categorically used for breads or loaves. Now, this is a crinkle cutter, if you see. It's also known as a serrated crinkle cutter. When we were talking about actually using a knife, I spoke about pushing it or pulling it towards you. Remember? In a seesaw kind of a motion. This is used very differently. For this, you need to apply pressure from the top, like so. And that's where you get the crinkle cut. Let's see how. You keep it right on top of the vegetable and push it. That's the major difference between this knife and the other knives. Now the purpose of this knife is generally to cut vegetables or root vegetables. For example, a carrot. Similarly, so what you get is this crinkle shape like so. Very simple. Now, now these are all serrated knives of different kinds. The purpose is all the same. They're all used to cut loaves because loaves generally, if you see, have like a crust on the outside and inside there are crumbs. Now to run into the crumbs, you actually need like a seesaw motion. So whichever, as of now, I'm comfortable with something like this for the video. So I am showing you the use of this knife. It's very simple. What you need to do is start from one end and go into a seesaw motion like so. Now, if you're fond of eating breads in your house and you like them sliced by yourself or you want to remove the edges, this is your friend. Now, you may think, what if I use a chopper for this? So let me take this and show you what happens. Now, suppose you want to cut the sides of the bread. When you cut it, there are chances that the bread may start getting pinched on the edges, like so. Now you may ask me the difference, if you see this closely, this is still nice, firm and is still holding its shape. And if you see this one is literally pinched because of the weight of the knife or the blade. Let me quickly take you back to the beak blade knife for another purpose and that is deweining a prawn. Just for the uninitiated, it looks something like this. The head, the tail and the body, which of course needs to get peeled and all of that. And there you have the body, which has the vein. Now, if you want to de-vein, it's just easier to start from here and follow the shape of the blade as well as the prawn. That's where you are. Simple. You remove it like so. It just becomes easier. Simple. Now. You may ask, why do I invest in a big blade when I have an all-purpose? But in this case, do not go for the larger on-purpose, go for the smaller one. So in this case, you can do the same job using a tinier all-purpose knife. And here comes the last of the knives, which is of course, a carving knife. Now this in my possession is the shortest and the tiniest blade. Now if you compare it with this massive monster, that's a perspective for you. So this of course is a chopper and this is for these tiny delicate pieces of art that you see on a plate. Now in case, uh, if I can quickly show you, I've not done this for several years, so don't hold my carving skills by this. What you do is, let's create a triangle or a cone like so. Generally, a carving blade is always pulled towards you. So that's how you do. Now, what you need to do is the tip of the carrot, you create gashes like so. And that's why you get a little flower, which is something like this. If I can quickly show you something similar using a cucumber as well. That's where you have these little flowers, which of course with a little parsley, a little bunch of some other herbs and things like that, some cherry tomatoes could become like the garnish plate or platter for a lot of starters. So on this note, I have this whole array of knives for you. Uh, different varieties, different cuts and different uh, techniques 
in which you can use these different knives. Now these are very little in my possession, of course I can go all out and I can speak for another one hour about all of this but this I feel is extremely mandatory and it's all just right there in terms of information. Now like I was speaking about safety in the kitchen I was also speaking about the expense. Do not go for unnecessary expensive blades because eventually it's all about the purpose. Unless you are a collector and you want a certain brand or a certain blade then go all out. What's important another thing just before leaving is never ever try to hold a knife which is falling down as a rule as a principle in the kitchen we never do that because we do not want kitchen accidents because a falling knife may fall anyhow you may not know whether to hold the knife or the blade so remember this but just before i sign off as a note of caution for everyone working in the kitchen never play with knives in the kitchen with this this is me the bombay chef Vandranamdar, signing off bye for now